Okay, this is Fizzo's experiment to determine the speed of visible light. Um, so he has a light source over here. It's emitting light and it reflects off this partially reflecting surface and it has to go through one of the gaps in this toothed wheel. And it goes through that gap and it reflects off this mirror and it comes back and again it has to go through a gap in that toothed wheel. Maybe the same gap, maybe a different one. And then it, this time, instead of being reflected by the partial reflecting mirror, it goes through the mirror and it can be seen by the observer. Okay, so we've got the exact same setup here. The light leaves at source S, reflects off the partially reflecting mirror G. It goes to the bottom of the wheel, the rotating wheel, which is labeled W. It's shown here as well, and it goes to the bottom of the wheel at point F. Now, it, when it goes to point, uh, the bottom of the wheel, it can go through gap zero and travel the whole distance d. And because it's the speed of light, it, it's going to be traveling very fast. So it can travel a couple of kilometers um, very quickly. And then it reflects off mirror M and it comes back and it can go through F again. Now, when it goes through F, it could go through zero again, which is most likely if you don't spin the wheel fast enough, it's going to go through zero again. But if you spin it, fast enough, at a high enough frequency, then it will hit the teeth instead. So when it hits the teeth, you won't see any uh, light. The observer won't see any light because it's being blocked by the teeth. And if you carry on spinning it fast enough, if you spin it fast enough again, that twice the frequency, then it'll go through zero and it come out at one. Or you can alternatively just say that it goes through one, it comes out of two, it goes through five, and it comes out of six. Okay, this diagram will help you explain what's going on. So let's assume the light goes through at zero, this point here at gap zero. And if you're not spinning it fast enough, it'll come back through gap zero again. It'll travel that whole distance very quickly and it'll come back through zero again. But if you spin it fast enough, it won't come back through the gap and it'll hit the tooth. So when it hits the tooth, you'll see darkness. And and if you, if you keep spinning at a higher frequency, the light will still be hitting it. Uh, the tooth A, and if you carry on increasing its frequency, eventually it'll go through zero and it'll come out through gap one. And during this whole frequency, it'll, um, if you keep increasing the frequency, it'll come out through gap one. And then once again, you'll have to spin it very fast for it to disappear a second time by hitting, going through zero and coming through one. Alternative, you can, you know, it doesn't have to be zero. It obviously is going through one, two, and three at the same time. But it's about whether it's coming, hitting the adjacent tooth, or whether it's coming out of the adjacent gap, or the same gap even. Okay, this equation will give us the speed of light. C is the speed of light. D is the distance between the wheel and the mirror. And N is the number of teeth and gaps. So the total, if there are N teeth and N gaps, the total number of teeth and gaps is going to be 2n. f is a frequency at which light first disappears, meaning is a frequency at which goes in but doesn't make it out. Okay, I'm going to derive the equation by considering the fraction of the circumference occupied by any given gap. So that gap there, 0, is exactly 1 over 2n of the whole circle. If I multiply that by the time period, 1 over f, this is the time period for one whole spin of that circle. This simplifies to 1 over 2nf, and this here represents the time it will, that we will have for the light to go through the edge of one gap and come out the other edge of that same gap. So within that time, it needs to travel a distance of 2d. It needs to go from F to M and then back to F. So 2D is the distance it needs to travel in that time. And the time it has is 1 over 2 and F. So if I divide the distance by the time, I should get the speed of light. So rearranging this, you get 4D and F equals the speed of light. Okay, so here you need to just note that the F here is the frequency at which the light first disappears and it stops flashing. Okay. In a particular uh, experiment, the physics rotating wheel had 800 teeth and 800 gaps. The distance between the mirror and the wheel was 9.5 kilometers. 
The first time the light disappeared was at a revolution speed of 9.93 Hz. So that's basically the frequency at which the light stops flashing. Calculate the speed of light. So using the equation C equals 4 dNF, so 4 times 9500, so distance times 800, which is the number of gaps, or teeth, or gaps, and times the frequency 9.93, you should get a speed of light of 3.02 times 10 to 8, which is extremely close to the actual speed of light. So that's pr that's pretty good uh, calculation. Uh, so obviously, if you spin it at twice this frequency, what's going to happen is the light will reappear. So it'll go through one gap, and then it'll come out this adjacent gap. 